and Mrs. North, starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. enjoying the pie tonight. Mmm, goodness, Farrell. Only great. Delicious. Why don't you try? What's the matter with you, Smith? Nothing's the matter with her, Miss Farrell. Had a girl count my things? Sure. Do a stretch at Seneca Prison. It's heaven. Great food, beautiful scenery. It's a regular country club. Tennis? Swimming? Saturday night dances? Saturday night dances! We've seen the same movie four times! Now aren't you sorry you're leaving us so soon, Judy? Sorry? I bet you're heartbroken. Why'd you want to go up for parole for anyway? Judy's sure gonna miss the laundry. Oh, and all those nice, dirty floors to scrub. And the stinking crowded cells. I suggest you kids shut up. Now we're not allowed to talk. They'll muggle us next. Are you trying to start something, Bosby? Starting something, Miss Fair? Like what? I know the reputation you have for troublemaking. Well, maybe I better live up. A... Now with the office of Seneca Prison, Mrs. Wayne. Thank you very much. I think it should be understood at the outset that the riot wasn't entirely the fault of the inmates. Seneca Prison is overcrowded and understaffed. That riot had to break out, and did. Unless something is done to help these unfortunate girls right now. I'm afraid they'll be worse when they go out than when they came in. Until further financial appropriations can go through, we'll need outside help, volunteer help. Of course, I'd use blue. Mm -hmm. Why don't you try it? That's a wonderful thing about painting with oils. If you don't like a color, you can paint right over it. How's it coming, Miss North? Oh, just wonderful, Mrs. Wayne. You're really running on full schedule around here. Painting class, languages, dressmaking, all run by volunteer workers like yourself. Oh, well, I'm sure we're all getting as much out of it as the girls are. Maybe more. But I won't keep you from your class. <laughs> well, Edith, that's very good. Well, that's a splendid likeness of George Washington. It runs in the family. Her father spent 20 Christmases at Leavenworth for counterfeiting. Oh, I see. Well, how's it coming, Judy? Oh, now, what do you want to do that for? Oh, it's no good. Well, yes, it is. Oh, children playing in the park. Your colors are lovely, Judy. You know, I think you'd be very good with pastels. You mean it? Of course I do. Well, it's about that time, girls. You better start cleaning up. Yeah. Let's go. This is visiting day. Well, let's go. Visiting day doesn't mean very much to you, does it, Judy? Pretty soon I understand you'll be able to do your own visiting. How did you know? Mrs. Wayne told me you're about to be paroled this week, isn't it? Judy March? Yes. You've got company, March. 
A visitor. A man visitor. A visitor? Uh-huh. But I never have visitors. Who is it? You better go find out for yourself. <laughs> That's him. Hello, Judy. I don't understand. I don't know you. I know you don't. My name is Conroy, Bert Conroy. I'm a friend of Ethel Bosby's. Why don't you sit down? I thought you might like those. They're a lot more like that on the outside. Ethel says you're coming out in a week or so. Yes, I am. Thank you for the roses. They're beautiful. You're beautiful, too, Judy. Can I see you again, Judy? I mean, when you get out? Yes. Yes, of course you can. If you want to. I want to. So you like Fred Conroy? He's awfully nice. He's a swell guy. And he's got a big, important job. But more than that, he's our kind. You're not going to have to worry on the outside, kid. He asked if he could see me again. I knew he would. But the main thing is, you're going to need your own kind. we got to stick together. You think that Mrs. North is a friend of yours? She's probably doing this prison bit for kicks. She couldn't. She isn't like that at all. They all are. She'll forget all about you when you're on the outside. Your queen, Pam. Pam, guard your queen. It's just heartbreaking. You mean uh, because you're going to lose your queen? You know what I mean. A case like Judy March. A young girl like that having a prison record. Just a child, and in all that trouble. Pam, dear, everybody in jail is in trouble. Guard your queen. Check me. But you can't. I did. How about another one? Superintendent Wayne told me some good news about Judy today, though. Yeah? Uh, she has a job waiting for her as soon as she gets out of prison with a very fine and influential man named R.B. Joy. Joy's Toys, you know. Yeah, I read an article about him. He's made it a point for years to give jobs to former convicts. It's a nice break for Judy. Judy doesn't know about it yet. Doesn't know about it? She'd think it'd be awfully good for her morale if she did. Mrs. Wayne doesn't think so. She says conditions are still pretty powder keg at the prison. The girls are awfully bitter, and if the news got out ahead of time, they, they could make Judy's life miserable. I'm surprised if Mrs. Wayne hasn't heard about the prison grapevines. Hear the news about Judy? Who hasn't? Congratulations, baby doll. I don't know what you're talking about. I guess maybe she didn't hear about it. You've got a job waiting for you at one of the biggest toy factories in the country. Are you sure? It's all over the place. There's something very phony about it to me. I think maybe somebody on the inside here tips somebody on the outside at Joy's. If they could use little blue eyes here for a patsy. What are you talking about? Don't pay any attention to her. She talks too much. When she said somebody wanted to use me for a patsy. Forget what Ruth said. But don't forget this. Bert Conroy got you that job. Conroy? Told you it was important. Bert is old man Joy's personnel manager. <laughs> Joy gave him the job five years ago when Bert got out of Joliet. He, um, worked his way up. Well, then, did Ruth mean that Bert... Shut up! If you know it's good for you, you won't be beat what Ruth said. I told you to shut up! Remember, don't repeat a word. Hey, Marge. Super wants to see you. She's got news for you. Come on, come on. I haven't got all night. It isn't 
isn't just that we're pleased about you and your future at the Joy Factory, Judy. Of course we are, but this is a test case for the whole prison. You'll do your best, won't you? It'll mean a lot to other girls who come after you. Mrs. Wayne. Yes, Judy? I can't go through with it. It's all wrong. What do you mean, Judy? You can't go through with it. I don't want to get out, Seneca. I want to stay right here. I'm afraid of what's going to happen. Listen to me, Judy. Going out into the world is just like being born all over again. Starting all over again. I know it's frightening. Believe me, I've seen girls feel like this time and again. But I know you can make it, Judy. And you will. You really think so, Mrs. Wayne? I know you will. Now, you'd better be getting back. So you ran it to the super, huh? I didn't. I didn't. Oh, stop it. I know everything that goes on around here, you little stupid. Did... Listen, you ungrateful little punk. Conroy's been planning this bit for a long time. And you're going to help him. He'll be waiting for you tomorrow when you walk through those gates. And if you don't play wrong with him, you'll... Put yourself together. In line, girls. Move in the auditorium. so long for this moment, so many years thrown away, so many times when we could have been together. I know, Gregory. We must not always oh. walk. Oh. oh, how'd you like a date with that when you get out tomorrow? Marsh? What's the matter? I don't, don't feel well. I know how it is, kid. You're just scared about tomorrow. Butterflies. I'll be all right. Tell you what, why don't you go down to the super's office and lie down for a while? Read a magazine or something. I'm sure it'll be all right with Mrs. Wayne. Thanks, Miss Farrow. You're a good kid. North, you're the only one I can trust. I was afraid to go to anyone else. Afraid? I'm scared to death. If I go to the police, they'll have to take me back. I'm an escaped convict. I know, but, but why? If I go back, Bosby will get me. She said she would. And if I came out tomorrow the way I was supposed to, Conroy would be there. Conroy? Yes. Oh, please, Mrs. North, you've got to help me. Of course I'll help you. You better get out of those muddy shoes. Look. I'll get you some other clothes, and we'll have some hot tea, and you can tell me the whole story right from the beginning. Oh, my husband's back, and Lieutenant Wigan's with him. You better go into the bedroom. I didn't expect you back from the fights for an hour. Yeah, two quick knockouts and everybody went home early. Look, I won't bother you people. I'd appreciate it if you'd let me have that book and I'll go. Oh, yeah, Bill wants to see the galleys on that new uh, criminology deal. He says it's probably full of errors. Oh, oh don't worry, I'll, I'll get it. Where is it? Uh, in the bedroom, in, on my bureau. <laughs> I don't get it. Why was Pam trying to hide those shoes? Those are regulation prison shoes. And my guess is that your wife has an escaped convict on the premises. Well, thanks, Pam. Now, shall we stop playing games with each other? 
Games? Mm-hmm. Hide and seek. Who's hiding in the other room? Who's hiding? <sighs> we don't have enough information to go to Mr. Joy with this. Now, whatever Conroy's up to, we've got to catch him in the act. And you're the only one who can help us do that, Judy. I ought to take up then. Mm-hmm. Just like nothing had happened. Of course, there's one problem, how to cover Judy at the prison. Can I use your phone? Sure, go ahead. Sure. I'll call Mrs. Wayne. We've got to make it look as though she didn't break out. Just walked out with permission. Excuse me. You still up, Bosby? Yeah. It's after midnight. I'm the worrying type. Waiting up for my roommate. She won't be back. What do you mean, she won't be back? Just what I said. I'm supposed to send her things. Why did she leave the movies? She had an appointment. Well, I guess that's all her stuff. Wait a minute. I don't get it. You're not supposed to. But seeing how you're the worrying type, I'll tell you. Mr. Joy sent for her ahead of time. He sent his big black limousine that she left in style and beautiful clothes that he sent her. He wanted her to come out like a lady, not a con. Bless his soul. Good night to you, Bosby. Good night to you, Miss Vera. A real pretty story. Just like in a fairy tale. tonight. Tell you what, supposing we go out and have dinner in a little while, then we'll come back here when it's nice and quiet. What do you say? Well, I was supposed to have dinner with some friends of mine tonight. They're expecting me. Well, call them. I'm sure they'll understand. But don't you think it's sort of late? I think it's more important, Judy, that you do your job and do it well. Go on, call them. There's no answer. Well, we'll call again later. Hello? Hello? Oh, dear. You like it here, Judy, working for us? It's very nice. Uh, sit down. We'll talk. Can I fix your drink? No, thank you. We might just as well get down to work. Did, um, did Bosby tell you what this job was all about? Just that I should keep quiet. Well, that's good. I mean, that's good advice. You've, um, you've never been on the junk. Bosby said you hadn't. I didn't want a junkie. They're not very dependable. Would you like some candy? Go on. Only I wouldn't recommend the ones with the green wrappers. The green wrappers are these. Happy powder. What's the matter? Can't hurt you if you don't use it. And I said I didn't want you on the stuff. What do you want me to do? 
There's nothing to it. I want you to visit your old cellmate at Seneca. Naturally, you'll want to take her something. Present. Some candy. No. Oh, come off it, baby. Nobody's gonna suspect you. You're out on a brand new parole and all. You have no record for ever pushing or using this stuff. You've even got a good job, I saw to that. I can't. And don't fight me. I said you will. <laughs> You don't drink, do you? I hope you don't mind if I have one. <laughs> How clumsy can he get? That'll teach me. Paying 30 bucks for a hand-painted tie. You think it's worth it? You think it's worth it, Judy? No. No. I think it is. I think it's worth every cent. <laughs> What's the matter, Judy? Don't you like my taste in ties? Can't be that bad. So you're a stoolie, huh? <laughs> Coming prettier this year. Don't, please don't. This game is for keeps, honey. One of us has to lose. I've got too much at stake. Next time I go up, it's for life. You see how it is, don't you? <laughs> I'm a police officer, Conroy. Step away from her. <laughs> It's a turkey shoot, and you're not taking me. Almost had him. All right, Judy. Jerry will take you home. Wagon speaking. Yeah, send the wagon to Elm and Trenton. Right. The Joy Factory. Yeah. Well, shall we sit down? Judy, you here. Mrs. Wayne, are you there, Bill? Thank you. Welcome. Oh, what's this? Open it, Judy. We've been dying to know. That's right, Judy. And I can truly say you've earned it. Until tonight, we never understood exactly what hold Ethel Bosby had over the other girls. Thanks to you, we know now. And I think Seneca Prison will be a happier place. Will you do me a favor, Mrs. Wayne? Don't make it too happy. I don't think I'd like seeing Pam only on regular visiting days. <laughs> <laughs> You're worrying unnecessarily, chum. Pam's already doing one life turn. Well, you're right. A prisoner of love. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. North is directed by Lou Landers, produced by John W. Loveton. A John W. Loveton production, starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning, featuring Francis DeSales.
This has been a film presentation.